So when did you start working on the uh, XVX? So, um, yeah, my, my dad and I talked no. about XVX uh, some Adrian, time ago. It already popped up on your calendar. No, I can't do it. Okay. All right. um, it's too much. I can't. I'm coming back from Amsterdam and going, you know. All right. Well, maybe we'll get him to come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> You have no They're idea what this is. Not... Hey, there you go. I don't know what I'm signing up for, but... <laughs> we'll make sure you have a good time. Wink, wink, not much. Yeah, so you were saying, right after the DAW. Yeah, so um, so DAW, what, it, as soon as we finished the development of DAW, and we officially launched DAW, is really when I started diving into the conceptual. Um, we had the, the, the drivers picked out and the relative location in space to get close to the time alignment. And, and during the development process, we fine tune all that. Um, so uh, Blake provided me with basic box drawing. This is the space that we have to deal, you know, work with based off of the, um, the scope of the project list that we've been talking about for about a year and a half before that. Um, and so that's when it's almost like taking the paintbrush to the canvas, and it's like, okay, how do how do we how do we sculpt this in a you know how, what I feel is a is a visually beautiful and intriguing design, um, and it 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 doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work if it's the best sounding component and it's in a styrofoam thing ugly in your room, right? It has to, not only has to function, um, it has to to have a delightful interface, and I think it has to be beautiful. And so that has consumed uh, ever since. Uh, what was the inspiration it. behind the XVX? What What made you? Wham. That? Okay. Wham. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when my dad finished the Wham, all of us. And it's still, it's such a, a a work of art. It's such a masterpiece. Um, that uh, <laughs> there are a couple of uh, of customers in Asia that want it, but they, they couldn't get it because it's too tall. And uh, we had some distributors saying, hey, can you modify it, make it smaller? But the aesthetic design has a story behind it. And my dad's like, no, it's, it is what it is. Um, and so uh, I think all of us as a team, we heard that and said, okay. So there, there are people that do want the wham, they want the performance. Uh, means is an issue, but size is, is an issue. Um, so uh, we took that challenge, and every room I've ever walked in in Asia, I've been there several times. I'm 6'4", I've been able to fit into all of them, so on the <laughs> scope of the project, it must be 6'4 or less. <laughs> so, you know, and, and that... That's that, a tall order. That, <laughs> oh, we got to edit that out. Jay, <laughs> edit that out. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and, and that, I mean, just saying that, well, it's got to be... Si You've got four drivers in the front, one rear firing tweeter, two woofers, and you have to provide the woofers with enough volume and space to outperform Alex and be as close to, to Wham as possible. Those are big challenges. I mean, it's easy to say, have it be shorter than this. But the way that we solve those problems, that's the fun for me. That's where the creative juices go. That's where we, we as a team, we really push each other to, to, to experiment, try new things, to iterate, to, to, to refine it in a way that when you look at it, it continually rewards you the deeper you look into the design where where you, you know, if you just look at it from the outside, okay, it's this tall, and then you start observing, you take the grills off the side, wait a minute, the gantry is actually recessed into the top of the woofer. You study it a little more, oh, there's there's a whole new material developed for the XVX, which we're calling the material right now, that um, creates a barrier between the gantry assembly and the woofer. And you study it a little more, and those gant the, the blades aren't touching the woofer, so there's not a, this, this uh, roundabout way vibrations can go up in the gantry. So it's isolating the whole top section from the bottom section. And you study it even more, and it's like, that, that's not just metal there. The machine work is just beautiful and scalloped, and, and it's, it's, it's tactile and uh, visually intriguing. Um, and then it's like, okay, well, we, we want the precision in the time domain to be like the WAM. And the micrometer systems that were developed for the WAM, okay, let's not just put one in there, let's put two in there. And the way that um, it, the, the gear system works, we had to re-engineer that to fit that down into the top of the woofer. So you have a vertical element where the knob is on the bottom one, and you have a horizontal on the top one. And so it's all problem solving. 
and it's it's a lot of fun to do that. Maybe let's go back a little bit. So, I've seen pictures of when you were a little tiny wee lad in the factory helping out moving boxes and things mm -hmm. like this. How did you get started? How did your father rope you into helping out the company? It, what did you do? Yeah, it, 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 it was never, hey, um, you know, there's this career path <laughs> for you, right? I mean, when you're working out of your, you know, your garage, you don't know uh -huh. when, what the next day, the next year, what, what's going to happen, really. It was, it was bootstrapped, yes. as much as bootstrapped can be in a garage. It was spending time with our family, right? All the kids were, hey, we, uh, we want to earn some money to go, you know, play with our friends and stuff. My parents never just handed me money. They gave me opportunity. If you want this, you know, you can, you, you know, box up some records with us. You can twist some wires. You can help us with, you know, assembling this stuff. And so that's, you know, a you know, necessity as a kid with, you know, a bike wants to go out with his friends and buy some candy, right? <laughs> okay, Dad, what can I do? And then the more, you know, we work together, it was, this is, this is pretty cool what you're doing here. And... Uh, and then, you know, high school happened and I was uh, working as a night shift foreman while I was going to high school and whatnot. And then went off to college and uh, spent a little time in the desert uh, doing some soul searching. And then when I came back from that, it was 100% Wilson Audio. My entire adult life has been dedicated to, to Wilson Audio. So, so that was your period that I call the 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, three months, three months of living in, the, in a tent in the so desert. And, and, I understand uh, you became Utah. a big avid practitioner of yoga. Yeah, learned yoga yeah. Um, and um, I, I, do, I dove so deep into it that um, people wanted me to teach them and then I got hired into a couple different studios and at one point I had uh, classes that had 70 practitioners in wow. there. It was a, a unique blend of Raja Hatha. Um, I like the, the meditative aspect, the, the, the calming element. Some people like, you know, the big room hot, you know, sweating and you're doing sun salutations and you're working really quickly through it. For me, the practice was more looking into the symbolism behind each pose and holding those poses and, you know, allowing yourself to feel not just the pose, but the symbolism behind it. So I, I modified it a little bit for myself. Do you still practice? Uh, no, I wish. I wish uh, my my lung collapse. I do stretch every day, but the way I used to practice now. So you can't pull your leg over your head and no. do spins anymore. No, not like I used to. <laughs> <laughs> not like I used to. So when you came back to Wilson, what were the things that you started to do to sort of familiarize yourself with the company? And well, well, my dad said, well, you're going to work your way up, and so. Um, you know, as, as a kid, I worked in the fab shop and sweeping parking lots and putting mailers together and stuff and answering the fax machine when I wasn't supposed to, right? <laughs> <laughs> causing, causing trouble and, and building where's crossovers. Where's that order? <laughs> yeah, where's that order? <laughs> Hello? I keep on trying to send you an order. Why for, you? The, for the young guys among you watching, a fax machine oh. was something that you actually put a piece of paper in so you could send a letter Old or information. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And yeah. somebody else on the other side of the world would actually get a piece of paper through this machine. Yeah, that's so, a fax machine. So uh, yeah, working uh, in in production, um, I worked in inventory, worked in the fab shop, and so when I came back, and I uh, expressed that uh, this is really this is this is my career path. Um, I see how I can not only work with you, um, I can contribute to how this company is growing and I want to learn from you. I want to absorb everything I can because in a lot of different other disciplines, uh, my dad and I, um, you know, we spent a lot of time together. He was my best friend. He was my hero. And um, yeah, I, I, I learned a lot from him. And so it's okay. So now let's, let's do this uh, mentor apprenticeship. And uh, so he said, okay. So, um, go back to the workshop because he knew and I didn't have the foresight at the time but he knew um, in succession working in the different departments um, developing those skills and how things uh, piece together what works and more importantly what doesn't work um, helps has helped me immensely in as being a designer where as we're constructing we're slicing and dicing up a design 
I can really quickly say, well, no, we can't do it like that because it makes a challenge for the guys, you know, putting it together. Or the craftsmen don't like it when we do it this way. Let's 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 re-engineer this so it's um, it's easier to assemble or the the um, it's it's a it's a better built product. And so that was you know he would he knew that that would help me in that way and had the great foresight to to say okay you know do this and. And while I was there, um, I did my best to set records and, and build quality as well as volume. And um, I had a run of over 600 units go through without one failure. And, and a failure can be a pinhole in a scene. Um, and so I, I took pr you know, a lot of pride in that. That's, it's, I, it, it was the shift in my life where it's not just my dad's name on the product, that's also my name. And dang it, I, I need to step up to the plate, and I need to show, and I need to prove. And and um, my mom and dad were very sensitive about um, any feeling of nepotism, and so they always pushed me harder. And I'm grateful for that, even though sometimes I didn't appreciate it. I do greatly appreciate it now. Um, we wouldn't have the things um, that that we're capable of doing now. We wouldn't have the designs. We wouldn't have the cohesiveness of the team. Um, Wilson Audio wouldn't be Wilson Audio without that path where he reset the path. And then, you know, going from the fab shop and, and going into customer service and traveling around and, and helping with dealer training and watching him uh, with with demos. And then and then uh, around the Watt Puppy 7 is, and I kept on saying, hey, I, my heart is in creating. I want to create, you know, I'm not good with people. <laughs> so, you know, talking to people, what I want to create. My, I feel like I'm at my best when there's nothing going on and I'm solving problems in my head. I'm, I'm dissecting something in front of me and trying to find the best solution for it. Um, and so uh, around 2002, Wap Puppy 7, the puppy portion of the Wap Puppy, he was uh, integrating uh, the woofer with the mid-range. And um, he was taking component values, 10%, 5%, you know, 1%. And uh, started teaching me, you know, can you hear this? You know, listen to this. This is where it's changing the sound. And it's much different listening in that regard than a system that's already developed and critical listening. Um, you know, do you hear how the hall is expressing itself here? Do you hear how um, the artists are, um, are interpreting this? It's a different conversation.